Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hey! So in this video, we are gonna recap How to Marry a Millionaire. Was it released in 1953? Really? 1953, starring Lauren Bacall, Betty Grable, and Marilyn Monroe. We're just gonna straight and talk about it. There's not really much of a heavy storyline. It's basically three women that live in an apartment that is owned by a man that's running away from tax evasion. Tax evasion. Yep. <laughs> and they're basically just trying to get their come up and marry a millionaire. Meanwhile, like Lauren Bacall's character, she is fully just like, look, I'm gonna set the ground rules because I'm the smart one. So all these things you have to follow in order to find you a rich man. And meanwhile, while the guy's away, she's selling all this furniture. So like all the furniture progressively gets less and less in the movie. She knew what she was doing. Like, <laughs> like okay, this man is on the run. He's he not gonna need none of this. He's not gonna call the cops on me. <laughs> <laughs> she was so trifling this whole movie. <laughs> yes, she was. And basically the whole time, an actual millionaire tries to hit on her. And she doesn't even want to talk to him because he wasn't wearing a bow tie. And I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, she was just like, if no man's wearing a tie to work, like he definitely isn't working any kind of job you want to like be a part of. And that's so prejudice. She was like setting all these weird like standards that like near the end, she was starting to bend so much. And like everything she like would say they had to do, it would all backfire. Like that was the weird thing about it. Like all the girls were trying hard to like, they're models basically is a setup for you. They're all models and they all want to marry a rich man and they're following these rigid set of rules that doesn't work. Doesn't work. Basically, the moral of the story is there is not a guide on how to marry a millionaire. No, and at the end of it, they all end up marrying for love. For love. But two of them did marry millionaires. Marilyn, who's Paula, and then... That is a weird name. Shotzi. Lauren, Shotzi, and then Loco, who is played by Betty Grable. Look at me reading my notes. <laughs> <laughs> but just marries out of love as well, but her man is not rich. But to me, I thought he had a nice little cabin though, but let's, let's not get too far. So basically, yeah, they end out of love and the guy who Shotzi ends up marrying kept that he was a millionaire a secret. I don't know how, since his name is in the building. <laughs> but he basically, basically tells the story at the end and pulls out this water cash and all the three women faint. And he's like, well, fellas, to our wives. And that's how the movie ends. They end up marrying out of love. Two of them get millionaires, one doesn't. Yeah, like, how'd you like this movie? I feel like this movie like didn't have a strong plot, but it was no. <laughs> it was entertaining. It was a simple plot, but effective. It basically told everybody, look, just marry out of love. Don't marry for money. And that's actually, well, I don't know. I don't know how you live your life. Cause honestly, sugar babies, I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> Props to you. I'm not gonna judge you. Do you. Yeah, and like also, if they were truly like money motivated, they would have stuck to their guns. I feel like Marilyn and Jane Russell's characters in, in um, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes were more focused and galvanized when it came to like what they wanted. Yes. Whereas in this one, they had no focus whatsoever. They didn't. There's a guideline. <laughs> they just wanted her to date somebody. And especially Loco. Like she just, she came in at the beginning of the movie with the millionaire already because she, she know she knew how to hustle. She only had one quarter to her name and she went to the grocery store and then comes in with a guy carrying all these grocery bags saying, oh my God, I forgot my money, how embarrassing. And the guy <laughs> actually helped her, which is actually the millionaire, the secret millionaire of the movie. Yeah, he paid for all her groceries. And like, even then you think Shotzi would have picked up on the fact like he must have some money if he paid for four bags of groceries. Right, I was like, <laughs> why did he kick her out? Like if he, if he bought groceries, I would at least be like, but wait. No. She was like, hold up, hold up. You're not up. coming in here right. with that gross white shirt with no tie. Yeah, right. I was thinking, I was like, oh, we're going to him to lunch. I know I wouldn't have the way that I am. I was like, oh, thank you. You're so nice. Have a nice day. You're not coming <laughs> in my house. I don't know you. <laughs> Even I, if the same in my apartment, I'm just like sitting here squatting. I know. I watched too much true crime for this. <laughs> I'm like, nope. <laughs> Never mind. I was about to say something that I was not even going to do. <laughs> nope, I would not even have, I'm, I'm with Shotzi. I would not even have invited him for lunch either. Yeah, she's like, you're riffraff. Don't come in my house with that gross white shirt with no tie. Okay, I have standards in this home. Like the rapper? Yeah. Oh, wow. She seemed like that type to like, you have to have coasters in order to like drink at her house if she had furniture. We we don't have furniture. <laughs> we were in a similar I, boat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're hawking all of our furniture. <laughs> even though we just ordered a pink little futon. Yep. Hopefully you'll see it in the next video. And we'll have a nice little pink futon here. Yeah, we decided we've gone long enough without a sofa. We need a couch. <laughs> I know, and it, we only lasted, what, three weeks? Yeah. And we were like, no, we're done, we're done. Screw this, it was, it's gonna be cute. Just wait, these guys are gonna be cute. Where were we? Oh, Marilyn, 
Uh, Ashley and this character is actually quite funny. Like I enjoyed her character in this movie. Her fashion was on point. Like I really love that uh, purple satin dress with the glitter. I don't like know. A little slit strap. Yes, I wanted to say a glitter harness. It kind of looked like a harness. <laughs> like a little little harness. <laughs> it was really cute. Her dresses were cute. She plays someone who can't really see well without her glasses. Yeah, as she put it, she's blind as a bat without her glasses on. And she's, like, she's bumping in the walls and shaking hands with like toasters and everything. <laughs> like Now I know where the reference comes from. Where all, when I see a lot of Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe posters with glasses and I wear Thor's. Yeah. Jimmy James, the famous drag queen, was a Marilyn Monroe impersonator and took a famous picture like that and actually gets confused for her quite often. Yes, I've seen that picture everywhere and I didn't know the backstory. I for real thought it was Marilyn, but then later on when obviously dating James, I learned a lot more stuff about queer history and that's actually Jimmy James, who's a drag queen, a Marilyn Monroe impersonator. And I was like, come on, <laughs> Jimmy James. <laughs> Which inspires Marilyn's look today. I put glasses on her just in honor of the movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, is, she is so blind in the movie. And throughout the movie, she actually falls in love with a guy who owns that apartment who they're squatting, who's actually evading the police. Through their prescription glasses, they find love. Yeah, he like tells her a whole spiel about how he used to be ashamed of it, but he's not ashamed anymore, and that inspires her. And she's going so far to like act like she does not, like she doesn't need them, like reading her book and it's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, girl, you, what were you doing this whole time? Just imagining things? That's honestly <laughs> what I do. When I read, I have to reread multiple times because I be imagining things, and I'm pretty sure that's what she was doing. She's like, I'm just gonna imagine a movie in my head and pretend I'm reading. And like you could tell she definitely wanted someone with a similar vision as her because the guy she was hooking up with had an eye patch. And like there's a little subtle moment where he like pokes his eye patch up. You can see he's not, he doesn't actually need it. Just, <laughs> <laughs> his his eye's perfectly fine. He's just posing. <laughs> the other loco, it's funny, I, it's for me, as someone who speaks Spanish, Loco is like saying it as her name is crazy because her, her, that name, that literally means crazy. They didn't mention that in the beginning of the movie. I didn't notice that. You see, I don't I try paying attention and it didn't even happen. Yeah, Marilyn doesn't say that it's Spanish. But like, yeah, you know, they call her Loco. That means crazy. And you know what? Marilyn Monroe is Mexican mm -hmm. by nationality. So she must have known. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't believe me, look it up. All right, but yeah, she actually has some cute dresses. Her hair was on point. She was cute. She kind of reminded me if we're gonna take it to like future times, kind of like a baby spice. Love just it, the, like just that. her demeanor, even though she was technically like the oldest actress there. She was definitely very cutesy. Mm -hmm. and you could tell like she had this character down, like she's played it so many times. I didn't know, this is my first time watching her. Yeah, Betty Grable was like the pinup girl like 10 years before Marilyn Monroe burst on the scene. Like she was making all this money and she was like the poster girl during the war and everything. Like the famous poster of her with her legs. She's not for oh, her legs. Oh, come through, Betty, whatever your last name is. Betty Grable. Betty Grable. <laughs> they put her in this movie and they expected like sparks to fly between her and Marilyn. Like they'd fight the whole time and she was completely not that way. She like flat out told Marilyn, look, I had it for 10 years. It's your turn now. She passed the, she passed the crown down. Yep. And Shotzi, I was surprised because she played more of like the mother figure in this movie. To me, that demeanor came off as she was gonna be like the older actress, but I found, we found out she was like the youngest out of the three. Yes, Lauren Bacall was actually the youngest of all of them. Like she started acting in six, when she was 16 years old and she was married to a much older like actor, Humphrey Bogart, who basically took her out of the movies and said, if you don't wanna work, you don't have to. So she did this movie just for funsies. And it was a good movie. Honest, and to be honest, uh, I forgot to mention this in the last movie we watched. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and this one are the first movies that I've seen from that era in the 50s where it's led by women because I'm used to watching the Jane Mansfield movies and in those movies she always played like a co-star. Yeah. But in these, they're actually like stars. They actually are the main stars of the film. Yeah, like I said before, like Marilyn had a lot of better material thrown her way and like female friendship was usually a big part of her early, early movies like this. She, like later on, she became more of like, you know, just an ensemble cast where she was like star billing, but she didn't really have a starring role. But no, these movies are definitely very, very fun. And one complaint I had about this movie, which we discussed this when we were like watching it, it's like they had a really long intro with that symphony. Yes, oh my God, <laughs> how did I skip this intro? I almost forgot. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I'm gonna chill here. I'm not gonna go get something because I'm gonna miss something. And then it just kept going. It was an orchestra beginning, very Fox, uh, where the intro is an or orchestra. But they played like two songs. Like we had to check to make sure we put the right movie on. I know. And I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go get my water. 
I'm gonna get myself some popcorn. <laughs> and I came back and it was still playing. I went to the bathroom, it was still playing. But then we realized it's probably because it was in a movie theater and they wanted people to find their seats. Yeah, people to basically finish up at the concession stand and whatnot. Because I think this like was really pre like trailer before they really showed trailers a lot like that. That's like a whole movie experience back in the day. I don't know if we get something like that nowadays. Yeah, because people spend hours at the movie theater. Well, we now, I guess our big orchestra play are just uh, movie trailers, movie yep. previews at the beginning. And this movie it, like had a lot of like really cool stuff about it. Like it was the very first movie shown on like I believe CBS, like their like million dollar movie. Like it was the first Hollywood film they like put on in the 60s. And like a lot of young people rediscovered Marilyn Monroe movies through it. Oh, it was put on television? Yeah, it was one of the first Hollywood movies put on television. How did they crop it if it's so widescreen? It was a new method they had, just, they had created. I forget what it's called. Someone out there will put it for, for me. Basically, they just put up two blocks like that and just cut off both sides of the end of the frame. Oh my God. So you just got a square, like Instagram when you prop something badly for square. <laughs> Instagram before Instagram. Basically. I do have to say, I know I'm talking too much about like the hair and fashion, but I did like Shotzi's hair. It was very page boy. It was really cute. I can see all the references now. Um, Loco had a nice little finger wave moment. Marilyn had her signature hairstyle. And Shotzi had a cute page boy, page boy under a curl going on. Like when they're at that party with the millionaires, like Loco's pink dress with a little flower on her neck. Oh my God. I was like, yes. I'm like, that is so you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and of course, Jane's like, I gotta get this remade. I sent it to my costumer like, um, yeah, can we do this? <laughs> <laughs> The Maryland dress I love too, that like Grecian purple one with the strap like you like. Mm -hmm. I love that. I have a Barbie dress like that. I should put it on this one, but this outfit's from the movie too, so it, it fits. But like, there was a lot of really good clothing, especially when they did that modeling sequence. Yes, the modeling sequence, it was cute. They had a modeling sequence because the actual millionaire wanted to talk to Shotzi because Shotzi kept blowing him off like, I don't want to go on a date with you, don't want to go on a date with you. And that's, this movie should have been How to Lose. A millionaire. A millionaire. It could have gone to either direction, honestly. You see the depth of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, basically the millionaire wanted to do a fashion show so he could see Shotzi because they're all models. And then he sees her and she basically gives him the cold shoulder again. He walks away like, oh, I see nothing that I like here. And I was like, ooh. But even then, she still doesn't believe he has money because she walks up to her boss like, you know that guy's trying to pull a fast one on you, right? Like, he is not wealthy. And <laughs> so sure of herself. Right, and he's like, you don't tell me how to run my business. So he basically didn't specify that he is actually a billionaire. So she still didn't know at that point. <laughs> but the way they fall in love is actually kind of cute. Shotzi and the character that the millionaire is, his name is Tom Brookman, the millionaire. And basically the way he falls in love with Shotzi is kind of cute because near the end, the main guy that Shotzi was going for was like, look, I'm too old girl, I, you don't want me. Especially what's gonna happen when I get older, you're so young. Yeah. And so basically she's like, oh, whatever, I'm gonna give Tom his chance. And they actually end up like making out and stuff. She's like, this is never gonna happen again. And then boom, on another date. It was fully like, I hope you know this is the last time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the last time. Mm -hmm. I swear this time it's the last time. Yep. Then they hit it off, but then they have like, a dramatic moment where old boy comes through and he's like, actually, I changed my mind, I want you. And she's like, screw that guy, I'm going where the money is. Right. And they were actually gonna get married. They were at the wedding. And then she's like, ugh. They have a talk in the room. And basically the old boy says, look, I know you're in love with this dude. Why don't you go after him? And like, what's his name? And she's like, Tom, Tom Brookman. He's like, what's his name again? <laughs> Hold on, sis. Cause you might actually have something going on here. <laughs> <laughs> and then basically, she, he old boy goes to talk to um, Tom. They come in, they talk it out. She still doesn't know that he's a millionaire because he didn't spill the beans. They get married, and then at the end, that's when she finds out that he's actually a millionaire. When she he starts flexing, like, look, I have stocks, I have this and that, this and that, and look at my wallet cash, I'm gonna pay for this. And that's when they all faint. Yeah, <laughs> they all are like taking it back. One of the weird things about this movie, I don't know if it's just like a lack of, maybe the budget was starting to show or not, but like when she was getting married to the old man, she was getting married inside the apartment. <laughs> I know, I was like, why, why didn't this old man throw this extravagant wedding? But I guess that apartment was huge. It was a nice apartment, but I'm just like, of all places, just in the apartment. That is something I didn't notice. Like, if he is rich, 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 why are you guys getting married in the apartment? She was like, I'm gonna get this over with now. She's like, I, no, that's probably it. She's like, uh-uh, <laughs> we're gonna get married right now. <laughs> we have an apart empty apartment, decorate it, get my check. <laughs> I mean, she ends up getting what she wants. She got love and she got money, so go her. Yeah, there were some questionable choices in Shotzi's part, especially with that wedding dress with that weird hat. 
That wedding was it like a sheer wedding dress? It was like a sheer like classic mermaid wedding dress, but she had like this sun hat on over it, like she was going gardening. It was the weirdest choice. She was she was trying to garden that money. She was watering that money, <laughs> that money tree. She's like, <laughs> but no, to me it kind of reminded me of like tablecloth, like a lot of um, doilies. <laughs> yeah, a lot of doilies tablecloths. That's what it reminded me of. And the meet cute with Marilyn and the man she eventually ends up with is he sneaks back into the apartment. Like he keeps trying to sneak back in and go in his safe to grab documents. And he's let in while everyone's gone. And this is the second time he's attempted this. The first time he got stuck in the rain. And the second time he dried himself off and went back in. And Marilyn came in. It was like a little scary. A little, I'm not gonna lie. Like when I saw him like sneaking up behind her, he's like, and she's just like on the couch. It looks like a horror movie almost. <laughs> where she's on the phone and everything. And she sees him. And like she could just make out his figure and she assumes he's there for Loco. Like she's like, oh, Loco just brought another random home. You <laughs> see, this is why I couldn't have somebody that just brought in a lot of people. Um, actually, I was that person when look, I was a teenager. Look, you know, Loco just knows how the weekends work. You know, the weekends are for doing hoe shit, right? She's like, <laughs> oh, you're just, oh, girl, she's not here. Shotzi's not here, girl. Come back later. <laughs> like if Shotzi's like some kind of barber or something. <laughs> but yeah, she was very like, oh, he's not here. Like, girl. I watched so much true crime. That could have been the end of you. Right, and like the fact that they by chance bump into each other on the plane, like that would have been like, you know, that one Rachel McAdams movie where she's on the plane next to the guy that's like stalking her. Like, no, I was getting all the flashes. Like, no, 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 this is a bad situation, Marilyn. Don't go with this guy. <laughs> Although like she was also dating a hustler too. So it's like, she was just making bad choices left and right. She went from like, kind of bad. To, wait, no, but they didn't say that, didn't they say that the man that she was dating with the iPad, that he was a fraud? Yeah. Like the whole time, like Shotzi's telling her, like that guy's obviously a con man. Like he's a gigolo. Is the word she used. Like why are you with this guy? And he was sending her off on like to Atlantic City for no reason. Like, which makes me question, like, was she about to get into some other kind of work? That's the thing. It's just like she clearly is being set up, That's and set she up. never made it there. Good. <laughs> she got saved by another oh. guy who was running from tax evasion. <laughs> You know what? She was pulling her Rainy Spears, Baby I'm in Love with a Criminal. She's in her Baby I'm in Love with a Criminal era. <laughs> she's like, I'm in, in love with a criminal era. Her, or if it's fun, she's in her true crime era. I love like when she brings him home to Shotzi, like she explains like, yeah, he just got into a little fight where the guy hurt his neck over his, you know, evading paying his bills. <laughs> but I swear he's a nice guy. <laughs> like he only tried to break the guy's neck. <laughs> oh, she's a ride or die. <laughs> She was fully just like digging her heels in. She didn't care. This is the hill she's gonna die on. She's married and she's in love. Married and in love and a ride or die. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. And Loco's story is kind of cute too. She was also involved with a man that was married and she just wanted, she wanted him for his money. And then she notices he's never gonna leave his wife. She's just a side chick. Yeah, and like even, she also like got a view of that cabin in the woods and she's just like, this ain't even worth being a side chick for. Mm -hmm. She was like, I am not SZA. She could be your nine to five and your weekend. She's I like, am not SZA. Maybe she could have you the whole time. <laughs> Full shit, she don't care. And like, she was looking for an out way out and like the, also to make a bad situation worse, she got the measles as soon as she got yes. there. Yes. Oh, then it, and then they're giving up the rich guy measles, a rich guy measles. So then she ended up falling in love with the driver who she thought was rich. It was like, from here to there, it's all mine. And she, he's like, yeah, I'm a ranger. And she's just like, had no idea what that meant. And then they go to get to a, the cabin, which I thought was a cute little cabin, not gonna lie. Like if you own that, I'd be like, oh, good on you, girl, you have it going on. But then it wasn't enough for her, but she was so crazy about him that she still stayed with the man. And he was, he was pretty cute. Yeah, and like, it came to a point where she eventually scares him off too because she's just being so mean. She's just like, look, you have no money. Like, I already made a plan for myself. I need to be secure. And like, she goes home with the guy that's having the affair and he's taken every way home to avoid being seen. And just by luck, the cheater gets caught on the bridge coming back in from Philadelphia. And he's like the 200th person to cross the bridge. I think 50th. Yeah, 50th. The 50th person to cross the bridge. So congratulations, they take pictures of her and Loco's just like, yeah. She just fully cheeses and like. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets caught either way. I, I have to say like, I liked this movie, but I didn't like it as much as Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. I didn't either, but it was still, it had what I was looking for. Yeah. It, it was simple, it had a message, and the fashion was there. Yeah, Fox will always come through with the fashion. It's funny how I'm liking the dresses and the fashion and the hair, and I don't <laughs> even know like, 
the right terminology for dresses or layers. <laughs> I'm just like, yes, come on, glitter harness. But also, like, when you look at 20th Century Fox, they're so bizarre because half the clothes they wear, no one in their right mind would ever wear in real life. Um. Well, now they, they do. Nowadays, they would, but like, you look at like actual photos in the 50s, like people weren't wearing that kind of extravagant wear <laughs> just to go grocery shopping. But you know what? It makes good it makes good for your industry. It's good drag looks. <laughs> yep. And it's like pure fantasy. That's exactly what it is. But yeah, thank you for recommending this movie. Uh, comment down below what other Marilyn Monroe movie I should see. And if you are Latino or if you're Spanish, let me know if you're interested on us recapping La India Maria. Hey. Because I've been watching a lot of La India Maria again, because I used to watch that when I was younger. And I was watching it to reminisce. And I was like, there's a lot to talk about here. That's it. That is the video. Hope you like it. Let us know if we missed something down below. What was your favorite part of the movie if you watched it? And if you haven't watched it, are you going to watch it? Yeah. All right. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay trifling. And until next time, deuces! deuces.